All right, all right, all right. It's Friday night. I am back finally. Ah, Friday night live. How are you guys all doing? Good to see you all. Thank you all for being here. I'm excited to be back. I haven't done a live stream in pff, a month, maybe more. Sheesh, it's been a long time. Back to work now. I had my, uh, you know, my parental leave for, I had eight weeks off. So that's when we squeezed in all the vacations. Everything got busy then. Um, hey, thanks, Brandon. Nice haircut. I appreciate that. Just got it today, actually. Really shows off my my widow's peak. <laughs> I'm glad to be back, though. Uh, we're doing Heaven Hill Night, and I couldn't be more excited. Um, let me know how the mic sounds. I had to adjust some of these settings. So let me know if it's coming in too hot or if it needs to be turned up. I can adjust on the fly. But what's everyone drinking tonight? Let me know what you guys are all drinking. Who we got in the chat tonight? Linux Cat is here. Brandon Weiss. Saw Guy Davis earlier. Dustin Martin. Good to see you. Nick Foles is going to be drinking a whole bunch of bourbon tonight. We were just talking about that in chat. It's going to be a good night. I cannot wait to uh, to get into some of the Seven Hill. We got a lot. I figured a cool way to start the stream would be to talk about um, the bottles I got when I was in Kentucky. So for those of you that don't know, I went to Kentucky for like four days. I pretty much hit every distillery I could because I wanted to, to do a, a series, a distillery series. So I have one episode out already where I talked about Michter's. If you haven't seen that yet, make sure you go watch that. And then tomorrow I'm going to be putting out another one and stay tuned for what that's going to be. One of my, another one of my favorites on the actual bourbon trail. So it's going to be, uh, I, I, I really like this distillery tour. So Anyway, so I was in Kentucky and, um, you know, I'm from Michigan, so we don't get a very good bourbon selection. If we do, it's pretty expensive. So I went a little crazy on the, like, total wine. I mean, we don't have any big box stores like that. So, you know, uh, party, what's it called? Oh, li Liquor Barn. Good Lord. It's been a long day. Liquor Barn and uh, Total Wine. I went a little crazy buying bottles. So I, I did the same, same thing last time I was in Kentucky, so... It happens, but I want to go over what I got. I'll take these bottles out. I got the boxes right here by my feet. We'll start with that. Let's start with the pour first. <laughs> now, this is what I got in Kentucky. Can't get this in Michigan at all. This is the Heaven Hill six-year green label. A lot of people love this bottle, and I've actually never tried this, so I wanted to start with this. Brandon White says the Blanton's gold. Excellent choice, brother. We're also going to be drinking the Heaven Hill Bottled and Bond. No seven-year popping up that I've seen, um, but this is the six-year. And this is the six-year green. Now, this is only 80 proof, is it? I don't even see where it says. I don't know. 90. 90 proof. That cursive. Man. Man. Oak and Smoke is here. How you doing? T Green, good to see you. DH Silv, Jimmy Daniels. Thank you all. Peter White, Moose76, Eric Jansen. Thank you all for being here. Steve A, good to see you too. Richie Z's in the house. And Joe Green. How you all doing? Happy Friday. Mm, immediately, this has got that Heaven Hill nuttiness. Not too much um, flavor really in the nose though. It smells really subtle. Which I guess you expect, you know. Mmm. Mmm. That's pretty solid, actually. So this was only $9.99. $9.99 I got this bottle for in Kentucky. So that's a great deal. Um, it does definitely doesn't have as much kick or as much of the uh, well-rounded flavors as the Heaven Hill Bottle and Bonds 6-year. But um, it's good. Tastes pretty solid. Bourbon Apprentice is here. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. ADHD fishing. Beagle Rare. Jason's uh, Beagle Rare came out today. If you haven't seen that yet, I know you all are following the Beagle Rare saga. Go watch Jason's video. It was a good one today. He um, he definitely added a a good option and good reasons why he added it too. Mm. Mm hmm. I like that. I like that. Good way to start Heaven Hill. Good way to start Heaven Hill night. All right, let's grab some bottles that I got when I was in Kentucky. I'll show you guys a little bit of uh, 
stuff I got. Stellar Matrix is here. How you doing? Dark Meat Chicken. Good to see you. Old Charter. That's right. Old Charter. Bottle number one. I'm just going to grab these randomly, so I don't know what's going to come out. We'll see. First bottle. Very old Barton. Uh, the 100 proof bottled in bond. So this was actually... It's not actually bottled in bond. It's just 100 proof, but... Either way, this was actually not available last time I was in Kentucky. They had the 86 proof, so I got that. But this is um, the 100 proof. I finally got a bottle. Uh, just everyone says the 100 proof is kind of the sweet spot for a very old Barton, so I really wanted to try that. I don't think I'm going to be able to fit all these on the table, but we'll start putting some there. Uh, DH Silv said, how long are you wait in line for uh, Elmer, T., Elmer, Elmer T. Lee at retail? So Elmer T. Lee has been my elusive bottle my entire bourbon hunting life i i've been i've sat in lines three times i mean more times than that in my life but for an elbert lee all three times i've missed out on an elbert lee by one bottle i mean i was the next person who would have gotten it so the person in front of me took the last elbert lee and i had to get one time i got an eh taylor I can't remember some of the other stuff I got, but I was so, I was so disappointed. That's the one bottle that's always eluded me, and I've always wanted to get a bottle. I've tried a, a couple samples of Albert Lee, and it's it's good. I would never ever pay secondary prices for it, but um, it's definitely a good a good option from Buffalo Trace. Mm, that's pretty good. Ten bucks. Come on. Uh, Peter Weiss says he got five Elmer T. Lees at the LCBL lottery. You bastard. Jealous. Jealous. Brandon Weiss says his elusive bottle's uh, E.H. Taylor barrel proof. Two people last time. Man. Yeah, I. of course that doesn't pop up around here either. It's a tough life. Tough life. Next bottle. Uh, one of my daily drinkers. Wild Turkey 101. So I, I got this because it was like absolutely dirt cheap. I can't remember the price, but I was like... Psh. It's almost 10 bucks more in Michigan, so I was like, I'm going to be drinking this all the time. I should have probably bought a handle. We'll put that one down here. Next up, another bottle I can't really find here. Early Times Bottled in Bond. I I'm happy to get this bottle. So last time I was in Kentucky, same thing. This was not on the shelf. This time they had plenty. I would say this is probably the best $25 bottle out there. This is a liter, too. This isn't just a 750. This is a liter. So one of my favorite bottles at that price, bottled in bond, 100 proof, and um, nutty delicious goodness is the early times. <laughs> Anyone else had early times or you guys think early times? What else we get? Oh yeah, Legion. So I picked up a Legion. Um, I think I saw this one time in Michigan, but it was well over $40. This was um, 30... 33 and I actually got it at the Jim Beam Urban Stillhouse. So not a I I didn't know if it'd be available at Total Wine. That was one of my first stops on the first day. So I was like, yeah, I'll pick it up. I've never tried it and I know it has mixed reviews, but it's interesting to me. And being me, I was like, oh, it's, it's a good one for the collection. And a lot of people, you know, I talked to, they they seem to like Legion good enough, so that was a good option. Let's see. This might take a while to go through all these bottles. I didn't realize we might have to drink our other four or five bottles quick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Peter White says drain cleaner. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> we'll see. We will see. Next up, Cooper's Craft 100 Proof. Now, I cannot remember who it was, but this is, a brown, this is from Brown Foreman Cooperage, and I can't remember someone... Somewhere in Whiskey Tube World said, "Hey, you need to get the Coopers." Was this maybe Bobby and Sam, one of Bobby's favorite um, favorite favorite bourbons or something? I can't remember. Either way, I saw this and there was a regular like forty or forty six percent, and I was like, "Nah, I better go for the hundred proof." I think this was actually a little bit pricier. The color on this is completely dark, very dark uh, bottle. So I was interested in this. We'll see how that comes out. Looks pretty good to me, so I'm interested. Yeah, it says he's heard some pretty good things about um, the Cooper's 100, Nick says. Yeah. Mm. Maybe I'll have to just move to the next bottle as we 
work through what I <laughs> brought home. Uh, T Green says he was surprised how fast he drank his bottle of early times. I know. I know. I Like I said, I've only seen it in a liquor store one time, and it was when I was first in, going into bourbon big time, and um, I didn't get it at the time. I didn't know what I was missing out on, but for that price, it's great. All right. What do we got next? Uh, another early times. Let me see here. <clears throat> uh, oh, yes. JTS Brown. 100 proof, bottle the bond. So one of the best, same thing, $10 bottles probably for this, 100 proof, bottled and bond. I really like this bottle. I only got one this trip. Last trip, I think I picked up two of them. This and the uh, JW Dant are both great solid bottles for the price. So that's a good one. If you guys see this and you don't, uh, and you haven't had this yet, I would recommend you pick this up because this is something super easy to drink, super cheap. And it's it's actually really good. Old Granddad one fourteen and old yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I saw in the uh, it, you know we're going to Texas coming up soon, and I saw Bobby and Sam said they're bringing the old Granddad one fourteen. <laughs> that just cracked me up. That cracked me up. Hmm. Uh, Michael Hassett said it was the New Orleans Bourbon Festival Bourbon of the Year. Which one are you talking about? I missed that. Hmm. Let me grab our next one. Mm. Heaven Hill, six year. Bottled in bond. Hmm. Can't believe they stopped making this. $14, $15 bottle, I think, when I got this. Disappointed. Disappointed they stopped making this. Everyone caught on to the hype, you know, that's the thing. Brian Walsh's JTS Brown is excellent for Manhattans and old fashions. Bartenders love it, yes. Um, and that was actually pretty much the the standard for old fashions at the like when I was walking down Whiskey Row, I stopped at a couple of the bars along there. Had a couple old fashions. I'm I'm more of an old fashioned guy than a Manhattan guy, but um Yeah. JTS Brown is what they use for most of them, and it's just, it's really creamy. Like, I think it's really creamy, the the, the mouthfeel on it, for, for being a $12 bourbon, you know? Mm. Man, that white label is, it, it still is substantially better than the green label, for only five bucks more. I think just that proof... The, the flavors that come through is so good. I love that stuff. No worries. They're bringing back the seven-year, doubling the price, DH Silb says. I know. I know. I'm a little salty about it. We'll see how it compares to the new release for $40. I know. I know. 40 bucks. I, I can't blame them. I mean, the way the, mar the bourbon market is right now, and there's money to be made, obviously. Everyone's buying up everything, you know? It's crazy. And, and that is the weirdest thing to me, too, Captain, is... Kentucky's not getting it. Like they're going to start off distribution to the rest of wherever. I'm sure it won't come to Michigan. But Kentucky's not even getting it. Like, I I don't know. It's weird. wonder if they'll sell it in the gift shop still. Probably on a limited basis like they do with everything else. But next bottle. Kentucky Spirit. Now, Kentucky Spirit single barrel. This is a um, liquor barn. Mr. Bruce's Neighborhood is what the uh, the label says on this. So I saw this, and I've only had a couple Kentucky Spirit um, different barrels before. Um, never a whole bottle, actually. Just tried them at bars. And it's it's definitely different than a Russell's barrel, you know, typically. But this just really intrigued me. Uh, maybe because they put Mr. Bruce's Neighborhood. So I don't, I don't know if that's reference to um, Bruce Russell, maybe. I'm not sure, but it's from, um, from Liquor Barn. So I figured I'd give it a try. You can't go wrong with a wild turkey product, honestly. You really can't go wrong with a wild turkey product. All right, next up. Four rows of single barrel. Now, they're, pretty much all of Kentucky was completely empty of Four Roses picks. So this is just a normal Four Roses um, single barrel. But it was only like $32 or something ridiculous. So I was like, I can't not buy this. If they come in Michigan, state minimum is like 42 bucks ish So I was like, 
even the standard off the shelf single barrels are great. So I had to get a bottle of that, you know, for that price. Long branch. <laughs> mm. Mm. Whew. Um, Bourbon Apprentice that I mentioned earlier, but Virgin Seven Year is Heaven Hill and discontinued as well. They kill all of their good stuff. Um, Vir Virgin? I don't. I'm not familiar with what that is. Um, Brandon Weiss says, out her in California, most of the Costco's have Four Roses barrel pick single barrels for $32.99. Sweet baby Jesus. That's ridiculous. That is so cheap. I can't believe that. Yeah, it's 40, 42 minimum here for just the off the shelf. So crazy, crazy, man. Mm. Uh, Peter White says he liked the Evan Williams bottle of the bond. Heard the Heaven Hill 6 was better. Honestly, it depends on the day. I like them both. Um, the Evan Williams Bottle and Bond was actually the bottle I brought with me to Florida on um, one of my vacations, and we drank that thing in, I mean, we were there a week, and it was gone at the end, and we bought a bottle of um, Woodford Reserve Double Oak while we were there, too. I say we, it was pretty much me who drank it all. No one else in the family really drinks <laughs> bourbon like, like me, so, but, okay, so in Florida... I went to a Walmart and they have a separate entity for their liquor store. Apparently, maybe this is a thing throughout the country. It's not not a thing in Michigan. It's all one, but the liquor store was a separate building next to Walmart, pretty much. So I went in there. They had Woodford Double Oak for twenty nine ninety nine, and they had Knob Creek Single Barrel Reserve for twenty nine ninety nine. I was like, that's got to be a mistake or something. But I I bought them both just because it was you know dirt cheap compared to Michigan. Those are fifty dollar fifty five dollar bottles in Michigan, so. I bought them. The Woodford Reserve didn't make it home, but the uh, Knob Creek Single Barrel Reserve made it. So that's, yeah, I know. Twenty nine ninety nine for the double oak. I, I couldn't believe it. I, I thought it was a mistake, but it's, um, it was really good. Now, this is one a lot of people talk great things about. Wasn't able to make it out to Glens Creek when I was in Kentucky, but this is the OCD5. And... Um, this is 114 proof, so hot stuff. I'm pretty sure it's not that old. Color on this is almost completely black, though. Doesn't say. Aged at least two years, it says in the back, so likely two years, but I've heard a lot of people say this stuff is actually really good. And a couple people locally, um, recent people I know locally went to Kentucky and tried this from the distillery, and they loved it. They raved about it, so... A little bit pricier for a bottle. I think this is around 55, 60 bucks. I know it looks like coffee, doesn't it? It's almost completely black for only two years. That's pretty amazing. But when I was at um, Peerless, they talked about Glens Creek and they said the distillers over there are really all about the science behind it, which is really cool to me. I'm a big, like I'm, I have a science background. So talking about the science part of distilling is really interesting to me. So they said the tour is really, you know, scientific. They go into big detail about the whole distilling part of it. I thought that'd be really cool, but I didn't get a chance to make it over there. It was, I had, <laughs> I had my schedule planned out every day to like the hour of when I was going to go do stuff at these distilleries. So it was, it was tough to go anywhere outside of that. Most of them close at um, like five too. So it makes it difficult for those of us that want to be out till eight, nine o'clock doing tours still, but it was a great experience. Let me clear some of these off so we make some more room. Now I had two big boxes. So this is, we're almost through box one of what I brought home. Great tour, love the OCD5, Michael says. Yeah, so I'm good, I'm glad. I'm glad. Good question, Bourbon Apprentice. Um, I do not know the size uh, barrel it was aged in. That could be possible, maybe it's a smaller barrel. Mm. Guy Davis also saw the single barrel for 32 bucks. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's an instant pickup. Even like an average single single barrel for Four Roses is, is good. You know, most of those are at least seven years typically, the normal shelf one, six to seven. So I would definitely pick that up. Guy got his first bottle of Blanton's like yesterday, I think it was. Congrats to you, buddy. Cheers to you. Like Blanton's is one of those bottles that it's kind of the first 
high-end bottle. Like it's the it's the one every person who's still transitioning into bourbon needs to get, wants to get their hands on. Once they have it, it's like that's the mecca. That's the mecca bottle I wanted, you know. And when you try it, it's great. Eventually, you'll be you'll keep moving on up, guy. You will. Just gotta find it. You gotta find the stuff. That's the hard part. All right. Anything else in the box? One more left. Uh, oh, this is the Knob Creek Single Barrel 120 for twenty nine ninety nine. This is from Florida. Uh, this is just an off the shelf, but um, still, it's great for that. Uh, Brandon Weiss says you trying the old Fitz thirteen tonight. We'll see. We have a lot of Heaven Hill stuff to drink, but it's possible. I'm not gonna rule it out. Where did I put it? Oh, it's on the other side. I can always go get it if I have to, but I've heard great things about that. I still have my 9, 11, and 13 unopened. I I was trying to hold off for a 14, and when I got the 14, I was going to do all four, and I couldn't get it from Heaven Hill when I was in Kentucky. I went to the, the Heritage shop like every single morning trying to get a, get stuff, but only one day did they have anything limited, and it was the Elijah Craig Grenades. So I was happy to get those, though. These things are awesome. Pretty much barrel pick Elijah Craig barrel proofs is what these are. So I'll be trying those at some point soon too. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Box one. Done. Pardon the noise. All right. Let's make room for box number two. I wasn't even planning to show you guys all these bottles, but it's kind of kind of nice going through what I got because I was going to do this as a video anyway, kind of like showing you everything I picked up, but it's more fun talking about it with you all and seeing what you guys think of all of them. DH Silva is going to pour some Weller 107 <laughs> from a bottle that doesn't suck. Yeah. <laughs> Dark meat chicken. I know. I know. 30 bucks for that and 30 bucks for the Woodford Reserve Double Oaked. I couldn't believe it. I honestly thought it was a mistake. Like, I thought I was going to bring it up to the register and be like, nah, this is 60 or whatever. So, that's why I didn't. And and I was in Florida, so I would have had to either ship everything back or pay double for my overweight luggage. All right. Let's see. Um, These aren't for me, but these are for a buddy. I got a couple of these. Bourbon creams. Anyone who hasn't had uh, Buffalo Trace bourbon cream, weekend coffee, oh, ice cream, whatever. It's so good. Um, I'll, I'll tell you this too. Uh, I went Buffalo Trace is one of the places I visited, and two. I've only been there one time before, but they had E. H. Taylor. It's usually E. H. Taylor or Blanton's they have in the gift shop, and I went in this time. All they had was Eagle Rare. Eagle Rare was their rare bottle. I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. I was like, is this really happening? Even at the distillery now, there's only Eagle Rare is going to be your rare bottle that people can buy. I could not. I was so upset. I just about stormed out of that place. Gorgeous place. Gorgeous place. But the gift shop, just disappointing. Disappointing to me. Eagle Rare. Eagle Rare is, I know it's tough to get in some parts of the country. I get that. Um. Where I live, luckily, Michigan, I can pretty much find it anytime I want. So I was I was very upset with that. Very upset. Not that I needed a fourth bottle of E.H. Taylor, but I mean, I'm, what if I wanted it? You know, what if I wanted it? What if I wanted a Blanton's? I, I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> Buffalo Trace at Eagle Rare. That's lucky. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. It's a tough life for us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's move up to Evan Williams. Get a new glass. Now, Evan Williams' bottled and bond is great. Um, like I said, that was one I could have included. Mm. Don't use your teeth, kids. But, um... Evan Williams single barrel has never really disappointed me. That's nice. This is a uh, vintage 2010. I should not be pouring. I'm not pouring that much. I'm not pouring that much. 
Uh, vintage 2010. Mmm, smells great. Um, proof on this is 43.3, but this smells like much more rich bourbon flavors. You're correct, Brandon. Um, they had a special release the next day of something. It was the day I was leaving, but um, they didn't. Sit, I didn't hear what it was. I just heard people in the gift shop talking about it. But yeah, that's all they sell. And it's not even E.H. Taylor single barrel. It's always the, the small batch. So, Rumor has it you can go up to the counter and ask for a um, E.H. Taylor Tornado Survivor. But it's four grand. So, go ahead. Yeah, Richie, exactly. Evan Williams single barrels. It, it literally just seems to be like bourbon. It's just the bourbon you expect, you know. Every single bourbon note you would think of is pretty much in Evan Williams single barrel. I don't know average, oh, I was just going to say, I don't know average age on this. It literally says put in a cask in 2010. Good Lord. So eight years, nine years when I bought this. I bought this this year, but it could be an 18. Don't they say on the back? <sighs> Barreled on 5-21-10. Bottled on 11, 5, 18, so eight and a half years. So eight and a half years, twenty nine ninety nine. this bottle is locally. Dark meat chicken, I won't call you crazy on that at all. Um, Eagle Rare is a phenomenal bourbon for $30. Actually, um, I mean, virtually the same proof. It's older than Blanton's. It's all about where they age it, you know. Blanton's is always good. Um, it's it's mash bill two, so it's a little bit higher rye, but uh, and Eagle Rare's mash bill one, so less rye. But it's single barrel. They're they're both single barrel, really. Now Eagle Rare's technically not single barrel anymore, but just about. You can at least find. Well, I shouldn't say that now. I say you can at least find Eagle Rare is the difference, but some people can't. So. Mm -mm. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh. One that was recommended to me many, many times by our very own cat and make it happen. Wild Turkey 101 Rye. And this is the liter bottle. Same thing, probably about 23 to 25 bucks, I think. Um, I can't wait to, to break this open. I think this is going to be a great contributor to my daily drinking rise. Um, Brandon White says he can get a Wild Turkey 101 for $12.99 for a seven fifty. Yeah. Rather have four of those over Kentucky Spirit for fifty. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't blame you. Um, that's Wild Turkey 101 is the bottle I have drank more than any other bottle I've ever drank. I mean, I've gone through more of those bottles than anything else in my entire life. So. Yeah, people are saying 101 Rye is great. I um I can't wait to get into it. I'm showing some I'm showing some man thigh here on the camera. Goodness, guys, got my shorts on. Oh, I man, Evan Williams single barrels is really good actually. Um, I forget how good this is until I open a new bottle again like this. Have a good night, Bourbon Apprentice. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate you hanging out. Cheers to you, buddy. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's so, so good. So good. Peter White says he'd lo love to get a 101 rye. So distribution must be weird on that because I can't get 101 rye. I've had people tell me they can order it and then it just never shows up. And um, it was everywhere in Kentucky though. So I, I don't know. I don't know how that works. Distribution is so weird. Um, another daily drinker I picked up, Bobby Special, one, uh, Old Granddad 114. Just love this bottle, and this was another one that was a great deal. I, could, I couldn't pass it up since it's a daily drinker. Fattest cork in the game. Thing's huge. Mm. Donner Pass Whiskey, good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Jason Unsworth is here too. Appreciate you guys hanging out tonight. Happy Friday.
Mmm. Next bottle. Russell's Reserve. Single barrel. This is a Camp Nelson pick, finally. So I have not had any Camp Nelson picks. And this is a total wine in Lexington is where I got this one. Uh, Matt is also here from Whiskey Crusaders. Good to see you, buddy. We're just going over all the bottles I got from Kentucky, so... It's, it's a substantial amount of them. Uh, <laughs> but this is a Camp Nelson A pick. And I think I got two of these from Total Wine. Um, super excited to try some Camp Nelson stuff because I have not had... <laughs> I have not... Sorry, I just read Captain Make It Happen's comment. <laughs> Fat is cork of the game. How <laughs> Bourbon Saint signs his emails. <laughs> That'll get you fired quick. <laughs> Camp Nelson... Pumped to try Camp Nelson. Um, Camp Nelson picks just don't show up here. We get some Russell picks, but never a Camp Nelson one that I've seen. So, uh, Okay, Bill just wrapped up. Awesome. Man, good thing I didn't wait for Bill to finish up then, because that would have been a long night. Major Hall. You got that right. Good to see you, Bourbon Road. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, pumped to try this. Russell's are some of my favorite picks. And a lot of people swear by that Camp Nelson stuff, you know. So, we'll see. We will see what else we got. Oh, yeah, the, the new Woodford wheat. Uh, interesting thing, I um, I didn't get the malt when I was there. It actually wasn't there. It was in the gift shop, but it was like 40 45 bucks. so I didn't want to pay that. They had the wheat all over in the, uh, the stores, but can't wait to try this. A lot of people have said really good things about this. Matt, um, how many bottles did I bring back total? Two boxes that have four, eight, twelve in each, so twenty-four bottles plus a couple. Oh god, there's a lot more scattered around too that were from like um, gift shops and stuff like that. So yeah, excited for the wheat though. Uh, yeah, Matt, the Whiskey Crusaders, they reviewed. Um, <laughs> they reviewed the wheat, and um, they they said it was really good. So I'm I'm pumped to try it. I want to get the the malt though to just kind of do a whole Woodford, you know, Woodford the double oat. The malt, the the uh, the wheat, and just kind of talk about all their expressions. So I'm I'm excited to try this one. Uh, yeah, Brandon. She actually didn't go with me on the trip, so it wasn't until after the fact, unfortunately, that yeah, she found out the the damage. Um, but yes, she's definitely a keeper. She's definitely a keeper. I mean, she she helped me build the room, so you know for sure. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate it. But after you just said it's horrible, <laughs> get rid of it if you can, right? <laughs> All right. I got a couple more left in this box now. I got a couple bottles on the floor. Uh, oh, this is another my my backup to the uh, Camp Nelson A bottle. So we'll keep that there. All right. Um, one that is on the menu for tonight is this Larceny Barrel Proof. So I had came up to the counter with like 12, 13 bottles of bourbon. And this super nice older lady, like maybe 70, was helping me. And she's like, oh, did you see what else we got in today? This was like after she was like done checking me. I was like, oh, no, what'd you get? And she goes behind and grabs one of the Larceny Barrel Proofs off here. Uh, 99.99 or 90, 99, I think it was. I was like, yeah, because last year it was 120, 130, I think. So I think they lowered the price on this. Um, this is 61.4%. And I'm a Larceny fan anyway. So I figured the barrel proof is going to be really good. I can't wait to try that tonight. We're going to have to speed up our, it's already, man, it's already 1, 11.40 or 10.40. We're going to have to drink. Mm -hmm. Poured some of the heel of his Evan Williams single barrel 07. Cheers to that, Richie. Cheers to that, buddy. Appreciate you partici participating in Heaven Hill Night. Uh, pal Joey, good to see you, bud. Uh, I mentioned the um, the grenades. I did get uh, two grenades from Heaven Hill. They had um, they had Elijah Craig barrel proof there too, but it was seventy bucks in the gift shop, so I did not. No, uh, but the grenades were thirty. I want to say. 30 and these are 200 mils each, I believe. If 
but I've never tried one of the grenades and people swear by them, you know, so I, I had to get them, just had to. I was excited to get them out, at least they had them. Yeah, larceny barrel proof, you know it, buddy. I'm, I'm excited for it. Um, all right, we got one bottle left. Oh, let me grab this one. Not afraid. I got two. You guys can't see this. First one, this was from uh, Heaven Hill, too. Heaven Hill Gift Shop. Evan Williams Cider. Now, this is for my wife. I'm sure I'll drink most of it because she just can't stand whiskey no matter how hard I try. But I figure so she loves apple cider. This is only 17%. Uh, percent. So I was like... You'll be able to drink this really, really well. And a couple of people I was talking to actually at the gift shop, just tourists, were like, oh, this stuff's good. So I was excited to actually get a bottle of that because I've never even seen that anywhere locally. Uh, and it was cheap, like 15 bucks. So Steve A is sipping on some B519. Very nice. Still no 519 around here yet. Still no 519. Let's move on to McKenna since we're... Yeah, I know. I can't wait till, well, I shouldn't say I can't wait till winter, but it's going to be, uh, make winter more to tolerable now. Now that um, we can make some, maybe cider cocktails, cider cocktail, cider recipes. Uh, this is a 9207. This was barreled on, Henry McKenna 10 years. So this is a couple year old bottle. I put this in a blind lineup with M10, George Dickel, a, uh, George Dickel 13, and um, Rebel Yell, Rebel Yell 10, which is actually a 13 year old single barrel that my bottle is. And this came in second behind the M10. So, so I, it's really weird that there's that debate with Michter's 10 year whether. It comes from Brown Foreman, you know, or it comes from Heaven Hill. For some reason, this is very similar to the, the single barrel of M10 I have. Because when we were doing these side by side in the blind, I was like, man, these are close. This is a little sharper. It's not as well rounded off. The uh, the actual M10 had more of a creamy mouthfeel. Uh, barrel number, good question, DJ, is 4876. Four eight seven six. Linux cat says you live in an area where they're having the mosquito e e e issue. I don't know what that is, so I'm guessing no. I don't know. Is that like a disease with the e e? It's not even coming up at work, so if it's if it's, it must not be around here at all. Hmm. Yeah, it's solid. Um, man, I wish it was still 30 bucks though. And now it's 40, 45 and harder to find. It's, it's rough. Michael Hassett says he loves the Henry McKenna 10 year. Had five different bottles and they're all fantastic. Wow. I've had one phenomenal bottle and two good bottles and one bad bottle. This one I would say is a good bottle. It's not blowing me away. Like I said, the M10 was substantially better. It just was better all around, I think. So, I don't know. It it doesn't have really the, um, the M I'm sorry, I'm talking about the M10 doesn't have as much of that Heaven Hill nuttiness. So, it leans me towards Brown Foreman a little bit. But <clears throat> Brown Foreman is such a distinct flavor profile. I usually can pick it out. And even that's, Mictors just masks their, their flavor as well, I guess. Mm. Henry Ken is good though. It, it is. You're right. I wish it was more available. I really do. Uh, DJ Beacon says he just finished off barrel 4791. Okay, not great. And that's kind of usually my impression with Henry McKenna. It's like, this is good. It's a good solid bourbon. At 30 bucks, it's like, that was my buy. Like, Unfortunately, that was when I was starting into bourbon, so it wasn't available for long. Richie's, you said he just cracked his first Traverse City whiskey a couple nights ago. 
Barrel proof, excellent, yes. Now, is it just their standard barrel proof or was it a store pick? They do actually store picks on their barrel proofs too, which are usually older and they're usually MGP. But if it's their normal barrel proof, that's usually four to five years, probably closer to five now because they're aging their own. And it's probably their own distillate too. So yeah, their barrel proof is definitely the best expression in my opinion. M10 rye is good. I'll take the um, the barrel strength rye over it too though. A lot of dill comes out of the barrel strength rye, but it's it's really good. Lower entry proof. Makes all the difference. Mmm. Really, Linux Cat? No, no one's even brought that up. Maybe It must be on the D Detroit area or something. Dark Meat Chicken came in with the $5 super chat. Thank you so much, buddy. Um, cheers to a great weekend. I'm off. Good night. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. We got a couple... Uh, Super chat options for you. I don't know what we're on. Let's do this one. <laughs> yeah. So good. <laughs> Man, I uh I haven't used any of those in a while because it's been uh been a long time since I've been live. I'm excited to be back live with you guys. <sighs> I miss this. It's nice to just unwind and talk some whiskey for a while, you know? Mm. All right. Let's move on to Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. What is it? 48. So we got time. We got time. I am going to pour the uh, Larceny Barrel Proof right now, though. Let it open up a little bit. Because I want... I want to make... See if we can give it some time to get some air. Let's see here. <laughs> oh yeah. Cork pop. Not too bad. I'm not gonna smell it yet. I'm gonna wait. I'll pour a decent amount for the last pour of the night. All right. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof first. Uh, Steve, this is the A119. So this is the one I reviewed. Still no B-Batch popping up yet. I hope it is. This actually doesn't smell near as hot on the nose as, um, as it did in the neck of the bottle. So I'm wondering if it's starting to open up a little bit. Hell joy, I like the uh, sounds of that. Um, let me know what you think of the bottle when you get it. I'd like to hear. Oh my gosh, 240 vials for samples coming tomorrow? Is that for Texas? That's ridiculous, Matt. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> You're crazy, man. You are crazy. Hmm. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof is so good. Everyone needs to have a bottle of this. You just have to. If you can find this, it's an instant buy. This, this is probably one of the, this is one of the bottles I would pay secondary prices for. So, I mean, like a year ago, these were going for 80, 80 bucks secondary. And I would do it if I didn't, if I didn't have them already, if I couldn't get them at, at retail, I would probably pay 80 bucks for this bottle. Like that's how much I, I love Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Brandon Weiss says, uh, Electric Barrel Proof always drinks hot. What are your thoughts? It does. That's because most of them are hot. I mean, they just are. The um, the B509, I think, is the, the lower proof one. This is 135.2 proof. There's no way that can't not drink hot. But to me, it depends on the batch. Because I've had some, some batches that are really, you know, really, really hot, you know, and give you a lot of that spice and barrel spice. And others are just like vanilla ice cream, honestly. And it it doesn't really correlate with proof or it, it's just that batch. I don't know what it is. It's just the batch. It's one huge batch. Richie C said, you plan on any blind bourbon barrel proof shootouts in the future? I like it. I did a live stream, um, whatever, a couple live streams ago. I did a blind uh, barrel proof tasting. 
And that was great. Now I have a couple more barrel proof bottles, so I could always switch up the uh, the barrel proofs. Um, it'd be fun to do. I'm getting super into this like toasted oak craze. I mean, at the at Michter's Distiller, we tried the Michter's Toasted Barrel. I mean, I, I've had it before, luckily, and that is one of my favorite bottles I think I've ever had. Toasted rye. The toasted bourbon is really good too, but the toasted rye is just out of this world. Um, boom! That's one of the bottles I got at Michter's. I was like the first one at Michter's, and they had this toasted barrel finish, um, and they had Michter's um, barrel proof bourbon. But I, I left the barrel proof bourbon because I didn't want to be that guy. They only had one of each in the whole store. So I didn't want to be that guy that bought both because there were other people there behind me and stuff. So I left the barrel proof bourbon for someone else. I could not pass on this toasted barrel finish though. This stuff is like, I I love I love this stuff. Um, it's phenomenal whiskey. Almost impossible to find, but it is phenomenal. Matt says the um, toasted rye is better than the bourbon too. Yeah. I tried the to I tried the toasted bourbon. I think it was batch one, like the first batch they released though, way back in like 2017 or something. That stuff was really good. I tried the 2019, I think it was or whatever, 2018, 2019 in at, at Mictors as well. Wasn't as good. Um, it didn't give as much of that toasted flavor as like the rye did. I feel like the rye just gives a whole bunch of great toast. Hmm. Bourbon's too sweet, yeah. Which I was saying, I'm on this, like this toasted, or I guess barrel, double barrel finished kick right now. I mean, it started with, well, when I was in Florida, I, I got that Woodford double oat, and I was like, holy cow, you know, 30 bucks. I drank the whole bottle in a week, and it was like, this is great. Then I was like, wait a minute, what was that other one I had? 1910, which 1910 is they, uh, they do the double barreling, you know, finish it in a second barrel. Then we got the toasted mictors. And it's just like all these, they're, they're starting to experiment with these, these either toasted barrels or finishing barrels, you know, finishing barrels with just new American oak again. It gives such a different element to the whiskey. And it's great. It's great. Woo! That drinks hot. You're right. It still drinks hot. <laughs> so it was muted on the nose. Um, but on the palate, it was really, it really uh, made my eyes water. Not not as much on the nose, maybe because I've already had four or five whiskeys, but no. It's still really good. Um, I'm getting more oak now coming out of this than I remember. When I did my review, it was pretty much a neck pour. Um, oh, Richie, you got the uh, the toasted sour mash. Nice. Disappointed it wasn't bumped up in proof from 80. Yeah. Yeah, they pretty much stay consistent with that 86 proof, unless something's barrel proof, you know. I'm really curious to try that, though. I wish I could find a bottle. Um, it's, it's eluding me. You know, I, I wish I wish there was somewhere that had it, but... I don't know. Whew. Elijah Craig Broker was still great. I don't know where I put my water. I was going to add a couple drops to this, but. Mm. So good. Probably my favorite available Heaven Hill product. They had, um, so at Heaven Hill, I'll tell you guys now, even though I'm going to be putting out an episode about Heaven Hill 2 with my distillery series, but I did the uh, Connoisseur Tour, they call it. I think it's 20 bucks. You get to try four whiskeys. So you get to try the Bernheim Wheat, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, Heaven Hill 12 Year, which is in the gift shop. It's available. It's $250. Not happening. Um, and then one other one. Can't remember what. Anyway, the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, I think, was much better than the Heaven Hill 12. I, I preferred the Barrel Proof hands down over the, the Heaven Hill 12, and it's a quarter, a third of the price. So, 
it's it, it's okay. Um, it's just the, the barrel proof is just probably my favorite Heaven Hill, available Heaven Hill product. Swami, good to see you, bud. Thanks for coming in. How you been? Jack Daniels Barrel Proof is another phenomenal whiskey. I cannot agree more. Um, un I underrated, I think. I really do. 60, 60 bucks. They do barrel picks on it, too. They're, they're single barrel barrel proofs. The, one, the bottle I have is like 135 proof, I think. So just about the same as this bottle. And um, the flavors you can get out of Jack Daniels Barrel Proof is great. I don't know. I, I There's still a lot of batches of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof I would take over Jack Daniels Barrel Proofs. That's a tough call. That's a really tough call. I think it depends on the... Um, it de de depends on the uh, the barrel. Uh, Mark JG, computer dying, no problem, bud. Thanks for hanging out. Cheers to you. Charcoal filtration, he says. You like that the most, those maple notes, huh? Which is interesting because... And I don't think this is I don't think this stays true for all of Heaven Hill's products. Someone can let me know in the comments if you if you know, but the side of the, the Heaven Hill six year and the, the Heaven Hill white label here, probably can't see it, but it says charcoal filtered, mellow and smooth, charcoal filtered. So they do charcoal filter some of their whiskey. I don't think the I don't think the Elijah Craig barrel proof and the higher end stuff is charcoal filtered, but they they do it with their uh, their lower end stuff, I guess. <laughs> Peter White likes Elijah Craig Barrel Proof more than Jack Daniels Barrel Proof. Then he takes it to the woodshed. Yeah, <laughs> it honestly though it, it does depend on the barrel. They're all single barrel. I mean, the 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 Jack Daniels Barrel Proofs are single barrel, so it's you know it's tough. There, I'm sure there's some out there that are better. Um, yeah, so this was my probably my bottle I was most excited about on the whole trip to. Was the uh, the Mictor's toasted barrel? Whew, I man, cannot wait to get into that, but I don't want to because I'm not gonna be able to get a backup like ever. You know that's the problem. So let me put this back up here. Um, probably my biggest keepsake bottle is this Willet Rye. Now I got to take a VIP Willet tour. It was like an eight hour tour, and we got to try. Oh my gosh, we got to try, must have been like 10 barrels, 10 barrels from all throughout the entire property. Um, and this is a bottle signed by Drew and his father, Evan, who are the master distillers and, you know, the family of Willet. So this is my most prized bottle. Um, I couldn't be more pumped to get this. The, the, the tour was incredible. We tried some, some experimental stuff that Willet's doing. Uh, different mash bills of their stuff that was around six to eight years. This was all like the family estate stuff out of the barrel. You try to will it 18 year, will it family estate 18 year out of the barrel. This was all out of the barrel. It was incredible. Um, I've never had an experience like that at a distillery before. One of the uh, the best memories of my life, probably that. So this is a really cool bottle that comes with a lot of really cool memories. So awesome. Holy cow, I got quite a stack going back here. Um, oh, that's all for that box. What else? I've got a couple more. So here's a Woodford Double Oak I got at um, Total Wine, I think. It's called um, Every Day, All Day. So I was like, that's got to be good. That's got to be good, right? Every Day, All Day. Come on, that's got to be. And, you know, barrel the barrel finishing, like I said, I was on that barrel finishing kick. So it's... It's got to be in the collection. Um, let's see. I'm taking on the sip here. Andrew, I know this wall is not enough. Um, this wall has been full since I built the room, and I just came back with a whole bunch more. I, I'm trying to put on like more tastings, you know, and and share with lo like locally with the people if I can. It's just tough schedules and work and everything else, you know. It's it's awesome. It's a good problem to have for sure. For sure. I know. DHL, it's the same with the normal um, Woodford Reserve too. They're small batch. Small batch picks. It kind of turns me away from getting them usually. 
I don't know. It, it's it's weird to me. I, I like the thought of a single barrel because each one's different and it's a new experience every time you try one of the single barrel bourbons, but time for a new house. Just build a whiskey house. I mean, you could do that, Matt. I don't have quite the stock you do, but you could build a whiskey house. That's for sure. <laughs> Probably the coolest bottle I got on my whole trip is this Michter's Fort Nelson Select. Now, this was the um, Michter's Fort Nelson Downtown Louisville. And this was the bottle your own bottle of bourbon experience. And this was incredible. Uh, if you guys saw my episode, you saw um, this whole process and how that works. But this is the Fort Nelson Select. You get to pretty much put on everything on the label. You get to put this little fiddly bit medallion on it. And the sticker on the bottom with the barrel number, the date, sign your own name. They talk about the uh, the history here. And on the front, she actually let me write with the channel name, which is really cool. Normally they said they don't do that, but I guess they're worried about people you know, selling it if they write something different on there. If you sell the bottle, it's gonna be worth more secondary. Uh, I'm keeping this, so uh, I don't really care. But and what it is is you can fill your own um, barrel strength rye. So this gives me a backup to my barrel strength rye. I don't know if I'll drink this or not. I will eventually probably, but Andrew just asked, do you think I'll ever drink that bottle? Honestly, like I love the Michter's Barrel Strength Rye so much, I'm gonna get too tempted one day. I'm very impulsive. I'm a very impulsive person, so I'll get so thirsty one day. I'll just, <laughs> I'll just open it up. It'd be a good one actually to uh, to bring to Texas if I could. Maybe we'll see. I, I wasn't planning to check a bag in Texas, but we'll we'll see. It's definitely a, a bottle I'm gonna treasure all the time, just like that Willow bottle. So. Really cool though. I would recommend you all do the uh, the filling experience if you could. Thirsty. She thirsty. <laughs> yeah, I know. I will. Yeah, it's gonna happen. I'm already like halfway done with my normal barrel strength rye, so it's it's gonna happen. <laughs> Matt says, "Just get you drunk and you'll open it." Yeah. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate that. Let's see. I got the nice widow's peak going. We got the five head showing. That's right. Thanks for coming in, buddy. I didn't see you uh, live tonight, Eric. Did you not go live today? I know you just got back from uh, Texas recently, so you've been a busy man traveling all over. I know, Swami. Can't keep bottles closed. I know. My problem is, is I have so many open bottles that I'm hesitant to open another one. That's the problem. You know, it's like. I should finish something else before I open another one, but I, like I said, I'm so impulsive. I want to try the other bottles. I, I do all the time. Mm. All right. It is Elijah Craig Barrel, or no, we just had that. Larceny Barrel Proof time. Oh, okay, got you, Eric. Gotcha. A bottle I couldn't be more excited about, like I was saying. Um, Jason, thank you for coming in, buddy. Good to see you. We're going to be popping some uh, Larceny Barrel Proof. 61.4%, um, 122.8 proof. They do have the barrel number on here. Like I said, this was $99 and cheaper than last year. Uh, I did not try last year's batch, so I can't talk to that, but... I'm normally a big fan of Larceny anyway, so. It definitely has a, initially on the nose, like a, even a much more sweeter presence than the uh, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof did. <laughs> Captain, make it happen. I have so many bottles open. What should I do? I've got a whiskey review channel. No way for this to backfire. <laughs> oh, man. So that really nice wheat. It's kind of weird with larceny. I kind of think of it as like a wheat spice. I know that makes zero sense, but it's almost like a spiciness that, that larceny has to me. It's classic like baked bread to me. But the, the spicy note I'm describing is just amplified in this. 
cinnamon, I guess, is what it would be. You know, kind of a cinnamon note. <sighs> Sinuses, man. Mmm. Woo! It tastes like larceny. Um. Wow. So to me, that's like a cinnamon bomb. It's like a it's like a red hot almost. Keep in mind, this is my one, two, three, four, five, sixth whiskey. But and there were a couple, were a couple barrel proofs in, in there. But um, it's almost like a cinnamon red hot. It really is. Hatumale. Hatumale. That's really good though. Really good. First sip, I don't know if it's worth a hundred bucks. Larceny, only more so. <laughs> Steve. Steve, yeah, exactly. That's what it is. Do it, Swami. You gotta drink something. Grab that Jack Daniels barrel proof. Mmm. Really nice. I mean, the mouth coating, the finish, it's all so much better. It's so much better than, than regular Larceny. It is. And I'm a fan of Larceny anyway. Um, yeah, Matt, no problem. Um, I'll, um, I'll at least bring sample bottles at the very least if I don't decide to, to check a bag. I'm thinking I'm going to have to check a bag on the way back. But on the way down, I'm not sure yet. We'll see. But I'll, I'll bring a couple samples of this for sure. I already booked my flight. I don't know. Will they let me check a bag if I just show up there and be like, oh, I'm bringing a bag, actually. I would think that's fine, right? Just pay. Ooh, yeah, Eric. I saw you. Um, Man, you're putting a dent in that thing. I saw you got that bottle. I'm sure that stuff's pretty good. <laughs> yes, it's called money. <laughs> they will always accept money, won't they, Matt? Mm. That's good. It it is good. Um, it doesn't really have any alcohol burn. For that proof, it's pretty amazing. I mean, that's just a neck pour. That bottle's gonna be really good when it opens up. Whew. I still, I don't know. I'm gonna have to give it some time and see if I think it's worth a hundred bucks. A hundred bucks is like. If you're getting me a hundred dollar bottle of whiskey, I mean that better be George T. Stag. Like that's how I feel about it, bourbon wise at least. It's tough. Um. Okay, Matt. Yeah, we'll do. Sounds good. TSA limits five liters per bag. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good to know, Eric. Um, I was planning to just do a carry on on the way down. This is before. I thought about it more, but, and then on the way back, you know, pack a bag inside of a bag. It's like a bag inside of a bag, a dream in a dream. And uh, on the way back, check a bag. You know, that was my plan. Bring some of those inflatable, whatever, bottle holders. But there's so much stuff, I, especially from the Kentucky trip, I want to bring to share now. Oh, the last bottle. This, this was another one I'm excited about, actually. Bags, <laughs> bagception. <laughs> Best comment I word I read all night, Jason. That's great. That's what it is. Maker's Mark 101. I'm actually excited about this. I really am. Um, I can't wait to get into this bottle. So you know how I feel about Maker's Mark in general. I just cannot get into Maker's Mark. This I, this private select I got at Total Wine when I was in Kentucky last year. And it's still like halfway full. I can't, I cannot, even the private selects a lot of them. I just cannot do it. I don't know what it is, but I know DH still says I'm never, I, if I ever get excited about Baker's Mark, I'm to get all, I know, I know. So the 101 is a um, international or whatever, overseas exclusive. And, um, or the gift shop. So this is from the gift shop. It's I'm sure it's just gonna taste like Maker's Mark 
with a little bit more proof. I mean, that's what it is. So, but this is a one liter bottle and it was 55 bucks. I was like, I have to get this. They also sold the, um, the three pack of the barrel proof makers mark. You guys have probably seen this floating around now. So they have a Maker's Mark Private Select, they have Maker's 46 at Barrel Proof, and then they have the Maker's Mark Cast Strength, all in a three-pack. 80 bucks at the distillery. 80 bucks. I I just about, honestly, I just about flipped my shit when I read that. I was like, you've got to be kidding. 80 bucks for three. I, I don't know. It, it, I was not happy. Let's just say I was not happy. I don't even think they were 370. Maybe they were 375s. I thought they were like 200 mils or something smaller too, but... And not being a Maker's Mark guy anyway, I was just upset. Especially when I saw in Costco they were going for like 50, 60 bucks at certain places. Eh, anyway, so I'm excited to try the 101. I'm hoping it's going to be substantially better than the normal Maker's Mark. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Moose 76 says, I like the Maker's 46. Are you guys still my friends? <laughs> 70 for the three pack. Well, that's not that much different. Well, I should, you know, it was 80 something. It wasn't just 80. It was 80 something. I, I, I can't remember what it was, but I can't get into them. I'm sure the Maker's 46 that cast strength is really good, but most private selects I can't do. They sold like three different private selects at Maker's. One was actually all 46 um, staves or whatever, normal 46 stuff. So, but I don't know. I can't really do it. Uh, Eric Wade asked if I'm into heavily weeded bourbons. Um, yeah, I mean, heavily weeded like a, a wheat whiskey. Bernheim's like okay to me. I'm not a huge, like just 100% wheat or, you know, a whole, bun whole bunch of wheat, I guess, like 51% wheat. But um, I haven't tried too many other than wheat being the second most dominant grain, you know, like the Wellers and Maker's Mark is by far my least favorite weeded bourbon. By far. I mean, pretty much every other one I can think of, I, I prefer to it. I mean, Rebel Yell, Old Fitz, you know, the Wellers. Any any weeded whiskey is just, or weeded bourbon, whatever, It's I, I prefer it to Maker's. Maker's always gives me a very strong cough medicine, alcohol, cough drop, like fake cherry flavor i cannot do the fake candy cherry flavor i cannot do that must bring back some traumatizing memories or something i don't know yeah you're right eric maker's mark is uh weeded yep you're right that's what it is corn wheat um uh, barley as far as i know <clears throat> So that sip of larceny gave me a little bit more um, alcohol burn, like ethanol alcohol burn. I think the bottle just needs to open up a little bit, honestly, because even this only sat in the glass for like 10 minutes. That's not enough sometimes with brand new bottles. Mike Myers, thanks for coming in. No problem, you're late. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming in at all. Good to see you. On the nose, it didn't burn at all. It was just that last sip. <laughs> oh no, 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 Eric. Eric says you just have to drink more cherry flavored NyQuil. No, that's like a thing of my nightmares, honestly. I don't know what it is. I cannot. I cannot. Mm. I think I like it. I think I like the larceny. I really do. Mmm. Like third breath, you still feel that burn going out when you take a take a breath in. That's that barrel proof, man. Mm. I like it. The only thing I don't like is the the label design. Like literally, the only difference in this bottle is it says barrel proof. It's exactly the same bottle. Like when I saw it, she, she brought it over to me. I was like, wait, you just showing me larceny? Like I've already had larceny. Like no, nah, I don't need that. I was like, barrel, oh, barrel proof, okay. So they should do something a little different to maybe make it stand out. Maybe even just change the tint of the label or something. But what do I know? I'm not in marketing. Uh, Nick Foles, what kind of bottles do they sell at Willet? Great question. So 
Will it actually, this is something you guys should all know actually, will it actually change their policy now so they don't sell any of the Willett family estate anymore out of the gift shop? It literally, and Drew told us this himself, um, it literally got to a point where they were getting over 100 calls a day asking if they're getting Willett family estate in or not. I mean, literally. And like, you can't, you can't do that. You can't run a business and have people trying to line up at your door every morning just to be disappointed or whatever, you know, it's, so they do not sell anything out of the gift shop anymore as far as the Willett family estate goes. That was from his mouth. So, and I've heard that from a couple other people, you know, down in Kentucky when we were on the tour as well, people who were part of the community there. So good to know because then I didn't wait in line at Willett the, the days I was there, you know, I went to Heaven Hill instead. So Jason coming in with a super chat. Thank you so much, buddy. Makers 46 for the world. Good to have you back. Thank you so much. Yes, it's so great to be back. I missed this. This was like, it's so weird. It's like, I, I took a vacation, came back for like four days, took another family vacation. So taking that long off, I mean, I couldn't put videos out really. I couldn't do anything. I just had no time. So I missed this. I missed the community. I missed doing this, drinking some bourbon with you all. So thank you so much, Jason. I appreciate it. Here's Super Chat number five. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. That was a uh, Canadian club. Not my favorite. Not my favorite at all. No, I can't do it. Can't do it. Yeah, Makers 46 is probably the sweet spot in the Makers line, honestly. Um, DH Silf said, don't they only sell that at Liquor Barn? Seems expensive and they make changes for a small release. Are you talking about the... Um, the Larceny Barrel Proof? It was a liquor barn that I got it. That's possible. They only had like three bottles there when I went and I was there the first day they did a release. I mean, maybe people aren't as much on the, um, you know, on the uh, Larceny Barrel Proof hype train. It's an expensive, but it's a hundred bucks for a bourbon. So, I mean, it's expensive. I, maybe not, but I mean, people are willing to pay that for other, other whiskeys, so... No, Swami, I do not love the Canadian Club. I wish I did. I wish I did because I could buy so much of it for so cheap, but I, I do not. I do not. That stuff. Oh, no, thank you. Mm. Mm -mm. It's definitely good. It's definitely good. Cannot go wrong. Uh, Patrick Flynn asked if I tried Pikesville. It's right there. It's right up there. That was in my um, live stream I did of my cast strength flight, fight, flight, fight, flight, flight, flight. Um. I'll show you some more thigh. Try not to break anything on the way down. So I've been on a big rye kick lately, so I figure we can do a poor rye. Why not? Now, I'm guessing this is probably pricier in my area than ever, where everyone else can get it for. Sheesh. It's a tight cork. Tight. Tight. Um, this is 50-ish 50, bucks for me here. And I, I know people can, can get it cheaper than that other places, but. Uh, Peter White says, maybe try the Canadian Club 41 year, 100, 100 proof. Yeah. Hey, Peter, if I can ever try a sample of that, I would love to. Because I imagine it's probably great. Um, normal Canadian Club, I guarantee that ain't 41 year. That's for sure. Eighty in Quebec, fifty-five here, fifty here. So fifty is pretty standard. And like I said, it's probably fifty fifty-five in Michigan. It is probably the best value rye. I would say. I mean, at that price point for a rye whiskey, it's very good. 
and the proof is nice too. 110, yeah, 110. Canadian Club 41 years, only 200 bucks, so it tells you a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the thing about Canadian whiskey too is it's blended usually, and it's, you know, it, it's kind of like scotch sometimes where they use second fill barrels, third fill barrels. It's not as regulated. I'm pretty sure they can add coloring if they want to as well. So, you know. Oh, no, no, no problem, Bill. Um, actually, I didn't even, I knew you were going live, Bill, earlier in the week, and then I forgot, and I scheduled mine at 9. So I was like, oh, and then luckily Steve reminded me that you were going on at 9. So I was like, oh, crap. And I, um, you know, I pushed it back till 10. So I still went on about 10, 10, 15, maybe. No big deal. I was watching a lot of yours, actually. Great stuff. Learned a lot about uh, old Pultney that I didn't know. Hmm. So I'm actually kind of getting... Kind of getting like a maple note on this. Maybe it's because we're talking about Canadian whiskey. This kind of smells maple syrupy to me. Anyone ever had that? Maple syrup on Pikesville? Maybe I'm just too many whiskeys deep at this point. Thank you very much, Bill. I appreciate that. Sting the nostrils. <laughs> Oh, so good. Mmm. Classic rye. Classic rye. Peppery, cinnamony, spicy deliciousness. So good. Yeah, Bill, he was um he was really, really personable. I mean, that's kind of his job, I guess, but <laughs> He actually was. I mean, he answered a lot of questions. Definitely very knowledgeable and um, down to earth too. You know, he wasn't just all about the brand. Like he wasn't all about the brand, just trying to shove it down your throat. You know, he was very, very interactive with everyone. Son of a bitch. That's when you know it's almost calling quit calling quits time. It's okay, not much. So I got a lot left. We're good. Power through. Mm. <laughs> so all you guys all saw all the bottles that I um got from Kentucky. There was one bottle that you could, I guess, for yourself, you know, for yourself, you would, um, you would get, what would it be? Out of, out of all those I show you, showed you tonight, what would be your bottle you'd want to get for yourself? Brandon White says, Bourbon saying, what's your drunk name? <laughs> I know. I know. Bill, can I list them? Oh, man. Um, well, the highlights are Willet Four Year, Larceny Barrel Proof, um, Michter's Fort Nelson Reserve, which is the uh, barrel, strength bur or barrel Strength Rye, Maker's Mark 101, um... Michter's Toasted Barrel Rye. Michter's Toasted Barrel Rye. That should be everyone's answer. That stuff is out of this world. A um, couple store picks. Camp Nelson store picks. That's the majority. There was, There's probably more bottles, too, I got somewhere else, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah D yeah dh self good point um they are the um legend grade barrel proof grenades they're definitely small and they're pricey they're 30 bucks a piece but yeah pikesville is great bill um 
Rye whiskey is like it really took me by surprise. I was not expecting to be as much into rye whiskey as I am now. I mean, when I first started into bourbon, I was like, rye is just off putting. You know, I don't. This is probably how it goes for most people, honestly. Like, you have to transition into rye. It was kind of off putting. I didn't, it didn't agree with me that well. And I just, it was, it was too sharp, too bitter. Bourbon intoxicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah five finger pour that's what we got you know it rye though it does it like it creeps into your soul and just takes over it's like you need to drink me now you're a rye guy now it's what you are and then you try a good rye versus just like a because i started with rittenhouse sazerac rye which is they're good, but they're not. They're more mixing rise for me than they are straight rise. And then it's like you try something like a barrel strength rye from Michter's or a toasted barrel rye from Michter's, and it's like it completely blows your mind. I I wish I could give everybody some of it so you could see, so you could just try it for yourself. I mean, it, I just I love that stuff. Whiskey Brazil, thank you for being here. Uh, Peter White says, have a pour of old Potero malted rye and you will know rye. Mm, never even heard of that. Interesting though. Joseph Brazu, good to see you, buddy. How are you? Michigan's got a big game tomorrow. I'm pretty pumped for it. I'll be drinking some bourbon during it. Michigan, Wisconsin, it's going to be big. Can't wait. Mm. Pikesville, though, everything you want in a rye whiskey. A great intro rye, I think. It brings you into the rye world without overpowering you with, like, 100% rye. Slapping you in the face, you know. Go Badgers. Oh, 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 Jason, you better watch it. You better watch it, buddy. Now, I'm, I've been disappointed with Michigan so far this year. They're, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe tomorrow they'll turn around. They'll be great, but I, I've been disappointed thus far. You might have to, Joseph. It's called tailgating season. We have to do it. <laughs> this is the one, se the one weekend of football season that I cheer for the blue play. Hey, it's a good weekend. You got that right. Got that right. Mm. Well, this was a fun night. Um, I didn't really, I'm looking back now, and I didn't really talk about Heaven Hill that much. We more talked about the bottles we got. Uh, but tomorrow I am going to be putting out a um, another distillery series review. And this time I decided to do Jim Beam as our next stop. A brief brief background I guess like Jim Beam has two locations so they have the Urban Still House in downtown Louisville and then they have the American Still House in Claremont Kentucky and they're both really cool but um the American Still House is just overwhelmingly like massive it's huge you have to take a bus anywhere you go I mean they they pump out the most bourbon out of anybody so you know <laughs> it's they're the number one bourbon producing company in the world. So I'm going to be talking about them. I put a lot of pictures up. Really cool place. The weather was absolute shit when I was there, but it was um, a really nice place to visit either way. Go Gophers. Minnesota. Uh, anyway, um, so a great place. So that's going to be coming out at 11 o'clock tomorrow. So make sure you guys all check that out. If you haven't seen part one, of my Michter's um, distillery visit yes yeah please do go check that out as well that was a lot of fun and probably honestly probably my favorite dis uh, whiskey road distillery that I visited so it, it's a good one to go to and you will all like that if um, if you go down to, to Kentucky and I hope you guys all do you know I hope you do go visit Kentucky I hope this mini series I'm doing is gonna help you when I first decided to go to Kentucky I I was looking all over the internet for reviews on these distilleries, which tours I should do. This was kind of before the whole whiskey tube community erupted, you know? Um, 
and I couldn't find much. I mean, there were a couple blogs about which tours were good and bad, but video wise footage of the actual tours, there was nothing. So I kind of just want to put this out for everyone else because the bourbon trail is really a once in a lifetime experience. Um, it's something I'll remember all the rest of my life doing, going to these distilleries and visiting them, talking to the people there, you know, it, it's really cool. So I do recommend you all do it if you can. Absolutely, Bill. Good point. I did mention that earlier. Jason just put out his Beagle Rare um, video today. And if you haven't seen that or been following the whole series, go check out that whole Beagle Rare <laughs> bourbon trail or bourbon everything, you know. Go check out the uh, the bourbon journey, if you will, um, of Beagle Rare. So we're, uh, we went to Jason at the Mash and Drum this week. He's going to be sending it on to Scotch Test Dummies. It's making its way to Dixon Denman very soon, and he's going to fix everything we've done wrong. So make sure you go check that out. But thank you all so much for coming back for a new and improved Bourbon Sane live stream. Now, I'm probably going to be doing um, every other week at this point. I have to work every other Friday late, like till 10 p.m., so that's too late to come home and try to stream after that. So at the moment, I'm going to be doing every other week. So every other Friday, I'll be streaming. I would like to, um, once winter comes and I'm not doing anything anymore summer-wise, I'd like to transition to do every other Friday and Saturday. So I would do, you know, Friday this week, and then the next week I would do Saturday at probably whenever, 9, 9 o'clock most likely. Um, so if you guys would be available Saturday too, that'd be a good time to hang out that we could do every week. But at the moment, I'm just going to stick to every other week. We'll still be doing two episodes a week and everything. So, but this is what I love to do. I love to do the live streams. I love chatting with all of you, everything like that. Uh, thank you very much, Linux Cat. I appreciate that very much. Um, thank you all for watching. Thank you for hanging out. Happy Friday. Have a great weekend. Enjoy some college football. Enjoy some NFL. Root for my Lions, please. Can we just get a good season for once? You know, help me out. Say some prayers for us Lions, Lions fans. Uh, we need it, you know. We need it. But thank you all very much. Um, have another glass of whiskey before you go to bed. Have a great night, everyone. I'll see you all very, very soon. And my mouse isn't working, so i got to switch to this. See if this works.